Hello everyone, this is Johannes and this is Sunova and you are watching Board Gaming Ramblings and today we are taking a look at Inventions Evolution of Ideas. This is a new game from Vitala Serna with artwork by Ian Utuo. It plays from 1 to 4 players in 60 to 115 minutes. Yes, we're talking about this game today and before we're gonna say anything this was a review copy sent to us from Eagle Griffin Games uh, which we are very thankful for because we really want to play this game yes. because we are huge fans of, of the Serna games as you probably know if you have been following along the channel for a little while we if you haven't seen the channel before then you can also check that we actually did a marathon playing all the six big Lacerda games in a weekend and we did a rating or a ranking of all of those and maybe like next time there's a new one when there's eight we might do it again eight yes. in a weekend mm -hmm. and, and then do, or maybe just do another ranking and, and not play all of them again yeah. because it's a lot of brain power but to we play want to play them again games. though we do. Yes. Today we are talking about inventions, evolution of ideas. Probably I'm going to call it inventions from now on. Yes. Just to make this good. video shorter. Uh, or just because I'm not going to remember saying the Or you whole can just name. say it like the, the first letters. I E O I O I. I O I. I O I. I don't think that sounds so good. No, I agree. <laughs> with all the sort is finally back with I O I. I don't think that's going to be a big yeah. hit. Inventions is a game where you. It's kind of more abstract than many of Lasorda's games. Like many games Lasorda has made, like you are making cars, you are making wine, you are doing... Rebuilding the city. Yes, you are doing this gallery thing, you're doing this like very specific the gallery thing. Gallery the thing. gallery of things. But in, in this game, it's more abstract. You are a civilization and you are playing that civilization from like the Stone Age and up till today. Mm, it sounds like a long game. And it is, uh, but it's not that long. It's not like it's not real time game. No, oh, thankfully. <laughs> the best joke Bob has ever written. I'm so happy when my joke doesn't work that I haven't written them. Yes, that's um, true. But yeah, you are playing the civilization, and basically what you are doing, the, the main part of the game. This is over you, by the way, if you haven't understood so far. You are playing idea cards out in the world, like you are saying, "Oh, I have this idea." You're presenting an idea to the world. Then somebody, might be you, might be somebody else, will know enough things about the world to understand how they can invent this thing. Then they will invent the thing, which is a mechanism in the game, we're going to talk about more. And then somebody might innovate it, make it more awesome, make it better. And then lastly, somebody will probably share the idea or the invention with the world to make like, okay, so we have made this thing, here it is. And that is kind of like the theme of the game. That is what you're doing. There's more like small actions here and there. Mm, but basically how this works is this. You are placing these pillars on these different actions. There is five rows of actions. And in this game, when you place one of your pillars, you're blocking yourself out from that action and the other action in that row. Every three turns, you are moving your epoch pillar, which is this pillar that just moves around, and and then you're gonna change the the uh, the the era of the death, which is like basically end of round stuff. So on your turn, you're gonna do that action. You might then chain that into doing other actions on your turn, and then you're gonna continue. There's 13 turns in the game, and uh, I think it's 13. Yes, I think that's correct. Yes. Um, and after that, the player who has the most points, which you get from presenting ideas, you get it from final scoring. Um, those are mainly the biggest ways you get points, and you have some goal cards, cards as well that you're trying to to, to 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 make work and basically get points for throughout the game. That was a pretty long overview because there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but now let's go into all of the nitty gritty artwork of the game because this game has it. Yes, I won't say it needs, that is nitty gritty. No, though. it was like it was like let's get into the nitty gritty of it. Okay, like it's, yeah. it was a joke. Okay, Another one written by Bob. <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you. But but this game has amazing artwork by mm -hmm. Ian O'Toole, which we really love. Uh, I love Ian's work, and he's done a great job with this as well. I think like. In contrast to the other Lacerda games, mm -hmm. this feels less busy yep. of a board. When we set it up the first time, we were like, are we missing components? Because yes. it looks really empty in the beginning and it fills up during the game. Mm -hmm. But it feels, I don't know, it feels clean and nice. Yeah, I think like it's, I'm not going to call it boring, but I'm going to say it's, if you look at all the boards of the Lacerda games, this would probably come out, I don't remember Escape Plan because we didn't like that one. Uh, so I don't remember exactly how that looked, but probably more interesting. I would say this might be like the less interesting looking board. Yeah. 
Like they're not that it looks boring because we like beige things. Yes, it's, and this is it's like, brown, more it's brown. Brown, beige, and light blue is like the color scheme of this game. I think Ian likes blue. Yeah, I think so. I do too. Like uh, Lisboa was like a, a, the blue game, and this is more like the brown game. Yeah. So you know you're getting a more maybe you're, you're seeing it and thinking, oh, this is gonna be a dry Euro game, and and it will be like it's a dry Euro game than many of his other games. Spoiler alert, but I I like it. But it's not my favorite uh, Ian O'Toole artwork. Yes, but as ever. usual, uh, Ian makes this very nice symbology mm -hmm. to go with the intricate rules of, uh, of Vital, so yeah. it m is more understandable. I have to say though that this is, n I, for me, this is not the best the symbol work. Yeah, like for, because not because it's bad, because mm -hmm. but but because everything else he does is so good. Yeah, yes. yeah, basically, like it's it's better than most. Anything else? Yeah, <laughs> but it's it's still like a little bit. A couple of the symbols, like a couple of the actions, are easy to 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 forget which is which, which yeah. because mm. they're kind of similar. The game also comes with a rule book. Oh wow! It wow. really does. Yes, and it looks like this. There is a, another one for the solo rule, so so I haven't read that. But so this is just the rules of the game. It comes out to twenty eight pages, uh, but the last of it is. Like basically there's even some learning here if you want to. There's three pages of just telling you all of the inventions. Yeah. This is what it is. This is when it came out. This is how it was, cool. uh, how it worked. Um, I, I don't, I haven't read that, but it's a cool thing. Like if you said. are interested in inventions and stuff like that, there is like, there's two pages of two player rules because there is a two player variant. Uh, other than that, so like the whole rules are 23 pages long as usual. Lots of pictures, lots of examples. Mm, when I read this, I don't know for sure. I still agree with myself after playing it and teaching it a couple of times, but uh, it didn't feel that the rules heavy. Mm -hmm. I read the rules once. I always read the rules once, and I I was like, oh, that makes sense. And then it didn't make sense to play the game because it, it usually doesn't the first time. But I will have to say that. There was nothing here that made me like, I don't understand that because there is 10 actions uh, and then there's this kind of chaining thing that we're going to talk about. But everything you're doing is basically those 10 actions. Yeah. There's a few other symbols, but most of them is basically take a dude. Yes. <laughs> so there's basically 10, 10, 10 different actions and when you understand those 10, 10 symbols and none of those actions are very complicated by themselves. Mm -hmm. So I will say that the rule book is very good and, uh, and I liked it. The yes. game also has something all of these games has. Play rates! Yay. And it's multiple pages long. Eight. <laughs> Eight. Uh, it should have been ten because you also have like this this uh, board on the side mm -hmm. which you only got two of which ex explains all the actions. I, I, I really like this but I just wished the, the board that's only two of again yep. was, was with this. You it's, got four of it. It's and... kind of weird. I have to say though that uh, I think most people will only need that the first time you play. Yeah. So when you play, if you play a four player game, That's true. you place it just between you. Of course, then you have to flip it around and stuff like that. Uh, but I but think- But you might I, also just like need this page for, for the remainder of your place. So, yeah. yeah. I think though that that is the reason. Yeah. Like that is the reason. And like remembering 21 different abilities and all that which is in there. Yeah. And all different scorings, all the different things that are in the game is it's like this is a reference. I like that you have made this. Oh yeah. It's, I am a robot now. Yes, yes, welcome to Board Gaming Ramblings. It's still not the biggest uh, play rate we have seen. No. Lisboa is winning with nine pages, yes. so that is still like the best one. I don't understand how nine pages no, work. No, that doesn't work. It doesn't? No. So maybe it's ten then. Yeah, maybe, maybe it's eight. I don't remember. I always said it's nine, but that doesn't add up. We have played the game with two, three and four players mm -hmm. and it has taken us two, three and four hours. So yes. almost one hour per player. Yes, that is a long time. Yes, it is. And it's like the box is saying you should use 2.5 hours for four people. Yeah. I, I don't know how that will happen. No. I don't think it will. Maybe it will happen if you are playing with four people who play the game 15 times and 
you can internalize and see everything uh, without thinking. But know that this is a long game. Yes, it is. And I think that four people was... And it was like we have played it before and they hadn't played it before. So it was like two people haven't played it before. Mm -hmm. So let's say you get it down to 315. Yeah. Maybe you could. Per, 315. Yeah, that's doable. But I, I think... It's still a long game. So what did you feel like was the best player count? Hmm, I felt like... Well, three players was, was the first time we played it. Yeah. So if I played it with three again, I, I think like that is a sweet spot. Because mm -hmm. you you get more of the human interaction than you do with like a very, very... What do you call it? Like... Um, I don't know. A dummy um, player? Yes. Okay. With, like, with a can, very dummy player. Anticipate yes, what he's doing, the dummy player, mm -hmm. uh, and four was uh, long. Yeah, and I, I'm like most of these games, one to four players, three is going to be the best. Like two to four, one to four. If you're not playing solo, then mm, probably three is going to be the best. I'm going to speak briefly about the two player game before we go into yes. all the stuff. Uh, because two player game, I think, also worked great. So if you are looking at this and thinking, oh, will it work for two? Because it has a dummy player, it's very simple. Like we. We usually, if there's more than like two pages of rules for a demo player, I'm not gonna do it. I'm just gonna play it with more people. Uh, but I think this worked very well. It's like a couple of things I would have liked. I, it might be in the solo rules. I didn't check, but I would have liked to just have like a little sheet that I could look at every time it was the the, the dummy player's turn. Yeah. Because uh, the dummy player is basically a pillar that's moving around the map and then doing one of the four main actions of the game, which is present the idea, invent. Uh, share or innovate in that order uh, and like saying can I do this no then do this then do this so it's very simple mm -hmm. but then it's like taking stuff depending on what action it's doing to to simulate another playing doing it um, and that was kind of hard to, to remember yeah, I so I would like to have just like a sheet to say like, okay it does this action it's gonna uh, place a card take the thing done just and it yes. might be in the solo rules I didn't check mm -hmm. uh, because I think the solo is using kind of the same dummy I'm not I'm not sure yeah. I, I'm thinking it so um, I think two worked great. I think three was the best, and I think four was a bit long. Yeah. Let's talk gameplay. This is a worker placement game. Yes, but you only block yourself, what? which is puzzling enough, mm -hmm. though, because because the, you you are getting very restricted yes. by by your own own pillars. But you also then can plan like exactly what you want to do and disregard the other players pillars which, which i enjoy yeah it's kind of weird like it's, it's making taking the interaction of a worker placement game kind of out of the picture yeah the only thing is that when you place somewhere like you have two different pillars you have the small pillars and the epoch pillars which are never leaving the board they're just like staying there and then moving and then three turns later moving so you're blocking that action for a long time which is very interesting uh, but it's taking out like uh, so when you are placing somewhere when the other player's big pillar is, mm -hmm. they're going to get an influence, and influence is uh, very important. Um, in a two-player game, it felt kind of tighter, actually, mm -hmm. because you get an influence whenever somebody plays where you are. Yeah. So it, it was actually more important in a two-player game to try to not do the action you had done mm -hmm. uh, that I felt than in the three and four player game. Yes, um, I wasn't, if I wanted to do an action, mm -hmm. uh, then I needed to do that. You, j If I gave you like a, a influence, okay, so be it. But you have like a lot of things, <laughs> you could do an action and do another action in that action. So you mm -hmm. want to like take like, a turn around that which was interesting yeah and this is also kind of different because many most lasura games has one worker yeah so this three. one is very like it's very different like vinyos has one worker kanban has one worker mm -hmm. the gallerist has one yes. worker uh, on mars has mm -hmm. one worker but a machine does us have yes, one, worker? one worker yeah so well. basically m most of the sort of designs yes. have like this one worker you move around so we, and, and here it's kind of so Many of his designs, like you don't block things, mm -hmm. but some you do, some you don't, here you don't. And I like it, but also as I said, like in a 3 and 4 player game, I never was like, oh, I'm not going to do that action because you're getting that one influence. No. Uh, so... You need to do the thing. It takes away some interaction there. Yes. Like it takes away, I don't really care which action you're doing mm -hmm. on your turn because I know I, I can plan my actions. But then again, if you couldn't, 
I think this game would be too brutal. Yes, I agree. And a lot of the interaction in this game comes from the invention cycle. Cycle! Because you, as you said it, uh, before, mm -hmm. uh, you present an idea yep. and then you invent it uh, or another player does. Yep. Or you can potentially innovate it, make it better. Better. And then at the end, somebody can share it. Mm -hmm. And you want to share the work between yep. the players. So, okay, you could do the entire process by yourself mm -hmm. but then then you have a, to use a lot of actions on that yep. and so a lot of the gameplay is seeing an opportunity to oh you have you have uh, presented that idea yeah I, I know the things I need to invent that now I'm going into to your plan, mm -hmm. which is not negative for the person who presented the idea in the first nope. place. No, no. Just beats up the process and that, that interaction is interesting. Yeah, it is. And it's kind of because you're getting different things. If you uh, present the idea, you're going to score points. If you invent the idea, you're going to get the card, which is then going to be a, a discount for when you build pieces on your little player board, a uh, little player board, big player board. <laughs> uh, uh, and then when you if you innovate, you're getting like a bonus action and also you're getting a, a two more people. Like people are important there, like yes, getting the like scholars, the workers, getting the... Yes. I'm going to call them workers because mm -hmm. I'm me. Uh, you're getting these people, dudes, uh, and more dudes. dudes. And, and, and then when you share it, everybody's going to get their stuff. So you're going to get the, Z, the points, the card, the extra dudes. And the people, the person who shares the idea is going to be able to score, take a scoring time. Mm -hmm. So the timing here is interesting because sometimes you really want the card. Yes. Sometimes you want the points, like points are always good. But like presenting the idea gives you an instant action and the points. Mm -hmm. So later in the game that feels more important because the points are getting higher. Yes. The, the more evolved the ideas are, the more points you're going to score for them. So it's kind of like you want to do a bit of everything yeah but it's not always super important for you like when i'm presenting an idea i usually don't think i'm gonna also invent this yeah Be sometimes if somebody if you really need a card and you yes. have it yourself mm -hmm. you might do that but i agree and sometimes you think to yourself oh i want to do this action now mm -hmm. and you look at the board and there is suddenly nothing to invent yeah. or there's nothing to innovate or there's nothing to share and then you have to for example build yourself up f for that to happen or hope that next time it comes around maybe that is possible now mm -hmm. i feel like um, Vital has really taken inspiration from his other newest games, Weather Machine, yep. in this game, because they're also you are doing like parts of a process yep. that that leads up to to it being finalized, mm -hmm. and you don't want or you can't in that case do everything by yourself. In this case, it feels looser. It doesn't feel as punishing, nope. and it feels like yeah less important because you have more opportunities to make things happen. Yeah, absolutely. It feels like when a machine, you could be like, oh, I'm placing these two robots here and then nobody else plays anything there. Yeah. And that action was was then nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but here, as I said, like it, the things doesn't go away. So when I place this, it might be like, for example, later in the game, if you play like a a five uh, era five card, which is going to score you five points or ten if you place one with a double. Let's say you place one where it costs two people. Mm -hmm. It's going to score you ten points. Then somebody might be, mm, I don't really want no, to invent that. I don't that. want to give you 10 points. That's legit. inventing the card feels like the least good thing to do. Oh, I don't agree. Oh, you don't? No. Wow. Because I, cool. because you I, have a scoring card that yes. really like drives you to invent things. Mm -hmm. And also, um, you couldn't, like you're building a lot of buildings on your player board. Mm -hmm. And those, um, what do you call it, discounts from discounts, the cards yeah, that you yeah. have is really important. I agree. And also, you can change some of the abilities we're talking about yes. chaining later and sometimes <laughs> I really want a card because I want more opportunities to do one specific action for mm -hmm. example I agree with you it just feels less uh, instant rewarding yes it's like when you're doing it I'm always like I'm doing an action and then nothing happens <laughs> yes, yes. And I'm like well, that was my yes. <laughs> you mentioned the, the final scoring cards you're gonna get three of them at the beginning of the game and then at the end of the game you're gonna score two of them and they're gonna score you one is gonna be maximum six one is gonna be maximum ten and the other is gonna be ten so if you, if you manage to do it, it's yes, 10. It's 0 or 10. Yes. Uh, so you maximum you're getting 20 points. And I feel like sometimes I work super hard 
to get that yes. that like 10 points especially the 10 point card that might feel like worth it to press for mm -hmm. but the other one let's say i get six points i might not work very hard to get the last four mm, yeah i agree because there's a lot of other ways to get points than mm -hmm. those cards you can ignore them but for example one card is giving you points for the uh I, what do you call it the the speaking bubbles i don't the, remember uh, the, the name influence the influence uh, yes. Uh, which also when you place that you mm -hmm. get bonus actions and you get points for them in themselves so mm, Yeah, that in combination yes. might be a good deal. That's true. Let's talk a bit about the the player board You are gonna have a big player board with a lot of space to build tiles many of the actions you do gives you tiles uh, I love this by the way when you get a tile in this game you place a placeholder on your board to show which yes. tile you're getting so that instead of me in the middle of my action being, oh, I'm going to take one of those and spending five minutes thinking about which one I'm going to take, then taking it and then, oh, where was I now? I don't know where, oh, I was in the middle of this action. What was my plan again? Five more minutes. This is great. This like I basically at the end of your turn, half of your turn is done. Then you can choose which tiles you, you want and then you can build the tiles. Mm -hmm. And the, 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 the rule book is saying that the designer tip is that when you know the game, then the next player can start their round. And this is kind of a two-edged sword for me. Yes. Because I I always, I never like games where you do things at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, never is like not true because I like some of them. But like the rule for me is that when the more things I do at the same time as you, it's going to be hard for me to understand what you are doing. Some yes. games I'm just thinking and you're doing your action and I kind of know what you're doing. But... This is one of those games where <laughs> I'm going to talk about training again because there's training and things are you do you can be longer turns and it can be easier to get disinterested yeah. about what the other players do. Do you agree? I agree. It's it's a positive and a negative because yes. the positive is that the game only lasts four hours with four people. This game has a lot of potential for AP mm -hmm. because you have so many things you potentially can do on your yeah. turn and turns can be then very long. Yes. If you can cut down that time in some way you're saving potentially a lot of time and making a player then start when when your turn really doesn't really matter for me anymore yeah. you're just puzzling in your own board i can start it's a it's a huge advantage yes. but then again when you're puzzling on your own player board even though that isn't important for me i may be doing something that might be important for you yeah but you're not re 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 registering it yeah but it's mostly important because i like i personally like yes. to know what yes. people are doing in the game to be interested in the game i agree i have to say it's not a big problem mm -hmm. because most turns i'm not building things yes and after you played it a couple of times it's going to be easier oh i'm going to take a white tile looking at them oh it's going to be this one That's do i true. want to build no Yes. Next turn, I'm getting this one. Do I want to build? Yes, I'm building this and this. Done. It's it's getting like the first time I didn't like this because I and we didn't like we we try in the beginning we tried to to wait but that was just boring because you're looking at somebody doing this for three minutes and being <laughs> yes. Uh, what that's, does this that's also do? Boring. I don't know. Uh, but after that, it was easier to be interested. So just like if you play this a time and you're gonna be like, but I don't know what everyone is doing. Play it again because yeah, it's, it's, it, it that gets, gets better. Better. If you remember, we talked about this in what was the game? Till Yeah. That was the one where yes. like you're chaining so many actions yes. that you are you are getting you're losing a, a trace of what the other player are doing. Yes. Mm. <laughs> we shouldn't go talk about the chaining. I, I just want to say that it's it's not a bit as big of a problem here than I had in Teletum for me. Yeah, but but I got like the same vibes. Yeah. Because when people are doing so many different things. It's fine, but I, I struggle to then keep with their flow mm -hmm. of their brains and I get disinterested in what they're doing. And I'm just like, okay, I'm thinking about me. But again, I'm usually thinking about me anyway, so and then doesn't matter. <laughs> we are, uh, this review probably would have been better if we talked about all the chaining at the beginning. As a big, we're going to talk about it soon, but now we have done it so long. Well, so we're going to talk about the player board. <laughs> yes. And <laughs> back to that where we started. Um, I like the puzzle. Yes. It feels like the so most... So just tell us a little bit about how it oh, works, yeah, what yeah. you're doing. Yes. Uh, at the end of your turn, mm -hmm. you can decide to build, then you will potentially spend these people, dudes. Yeah, and also the the ribbons, the which is not influence the, because that is the other thing. I think it's influence. Yeah, but yes. then we have talked about two things that are suddenly. Yeah, they call like influence bubbles or okay, something like that. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> uh, then you spend influence, and you can also spend your dudes to build uh, tiles on the map. Mm -hmm. They usually give you some kind of ability, different yep. ca categories of that, Three or you categories. can build. 
uh, scoring tiles. Yes. You get uh, discounts for the cards that you've already mm -hmm. invented. Have, yeah. And you're trying to build on top of bonuses or build in a pattern that will score you points. Yeah, because uh, these are going to be more and more expensive because they have a base cost and then the more tiles are adjacent to it, it's going to be cost like more. And you have three different houses basically. You have economy, you have culture and you have the last one which is technology. Yes. And you are going to have to exhaust these workers there basically. Mm, and you have scholars with the jokers, which you can exhaust in any, in any of the three categories to place these. And as I said, you get one discount for each of the cards you already have. And there's three categories as well in the tiles, which are the same categories. One is a one-time use chain ability. We're going to talk about that soon. And the other one is an all-time ability that when you do this kind of action, you're getting this is your like manipulated rule. Yeah. And the last one is the economy, which you have one economy tile at the beginning. You can unlock two more. You can place them and and then you can do that action once. You can mm -hmm. like do up to three bonus, of them yeah. in each era. And the thing, you have these wealth tiles as well, which is the scoring. Some of them, the A, B, C and D tiles are going to be the same each time. Then you have the E, F and G, which are going to be, uh, you're going to shuffle them and take some of them in the game, which are different variations of the same, same kind of scoring. Those are cool enough. I, I, I have to say that the puzzle, is fun, but I don't think that if I play this game five more times, I'm going to do it very differently. No, it, it's a more static feeling thing of the game. I yep. do enjoy it though, but it feels a little samey. Um, I'm always going for the same kind of uh, culture tiles or the same kind of... Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm choosing my favorites that I think like uh, these work best for my brain that, and I feel like they're the best. Yeah, that might, that kind of, like, might that be... That is just my feeling. ...seeing other strategies here yes. and there. But the wealth tile, let's say there's one wealth tile that is like every white tile you have in a, in a contagious uh, thing adjacent to this is going to be three points. And the same for all the other colors. If you can get those, do it. Yeah, And then just good. place your tiles in a way that they are in a group so that when if you get that you place adjacent to them because that is a lot of points that's like three points each you can get like 12 15 points 18 21 points for for one tile uh and i feel like you kind of if you don't get any of them you're gonna lose the game mm. i think that you have to you have to do something super good somewhere else if you're not gonna yeah. do any final scoring. Those are potentially a lot of points. Because final scoring, if there is final scoring, you should probably go for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and yes, I, I so I like that. It's an interesting puzzle because it's hard to get enough dudes in the right categories yes. and all of that. But like, it's not giving me, oh, next time I'm gonna try this thing. I agree. Because it's kind of the same. Mm -hmm. So now, Let's talk Finally, about the chaining. The chaining. Which is basically the main part of the game. Yes. I don't know who wrote the, the you're getting fired, Bob, for writing this script or putting the most important thing at the end. Chaining, I'm gonna say like like my hyperbole is gonna say chaining actions is the game. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. if you if you don't chain actions, you will lose. You have 13 actions in this game, and you know most of these games where you have few actions. It's all about getting more actions. Mm -hmm. In this game, you have this influence track and depending on where you are on it, you're gonna have one, two or three chain links that you can use on your turn. Yes, and you basically then use it to do more things. So let's say I do action one, which is to move some dudes on the map. Yes, then I, get... I don't know why that's action one, but it's now. Yeah, I'm doing that. Then I'm moving dudes on the map and I stop a place and I get another bonus. Then mm -hmm. I use a chain. Then I can do another action, which also might lead to another chain symbol. Yeah. And I can chain that. And then I can do like a th third thing if I if I have enough chains. Chains. Yeah. Chains. 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 Ch -ch -ch -chains. So you're potentially doing a lot of stuff and a lot of the turns. For me, mm -hmm. if I have more than one chain token, yeah. is I want to end up at that action. Or I at I least there? I want to include it. How can I get there? I have blocked that space with one of my pillars. I mm -hmm. can't go there. How can I manipulate my, my chain actions to do the things that I want? And there feels like there's a lot of roads to Rome. I don't know yes. if that is a Norwegian saying only. It, uh, no, no. Yes. All roads lead to yes. Rome. Yes, there's a lot of roads. To Rome. And that is, uh, yeah, making my brain Yeah, this spin. part of the game, I don't know why, but it just makes my brain explode. Uh, and it's, it's 
fun to kind of try to maximize these things but it's also like there's there's so much like many times i played i was like i don't know what i'm doing because i'm just doing this action and then i had to remember that okay i want to do that because i want to move there mm -hmm. and i want to take that yep. and end up at that other action uh so there's many reasons to do it like sometimes it's not the best to always use all your links uh your chain actions but you kind of want to because oh but i'm getting this and i'm not blocking that action so i can actually do that action next time then i can chain into that action so i can chain to that action and and this is a big part of the game i said the chain actions are the other actions so you can like you can chain different actions together then you have the cards which you can use like the, the, the specific actions give you a specific way to use the chain action yes and then you have other actions which just gives you a bonus action without being a chain so then you can use that action to place a dude so that you can do that action and that action as a chain action so i do that and then i move that over there and i do this chain action and then i get to and take in a dude and place it here and then i have my cards i have five different chain actions so i'm doing this chain action which lets me uh, place this um a new idea i'm a dude idea i place my dude and that let me invent an idea so i invent that and then i have a technology tile which i can then use an influence and flip it over use my chain to then share the idea and and my brain has already exploded yes mine too and, and i and then my brain really hates those turns where i yes. have three chains of actions available but i can't utilize Any. a single one of them because i blocked something off on the map or whatever um it, then i really hate it and also the designer or uh, vital uh, has a little like note on on the technology tiles where like okay these tiles seem expensive mm -hmm. to activate but it really could be very smart to utilize those chain acts it feels really bad not to chain yes sometimes you cannot chain and that is the chain actions yeah. and, and, and that is a lot of things about this yes. game let's talk a bit about the weight and yeah. who this is for what do you think this is a heavy game yes uh, and i feel like if you're a fan of lasertus games mm -hmm. you should check this out yes. or if you're a fan of involved euro games like mm -hmm. heavy involved euro games with interaction it's not like the most interaction it's subtle yeah it's a little different because uh, when first time I played it, I thought like, oh, there's very little interaction in mm -hmm. this game. And then I thought of how a two-player game would work. And I was like, that doesn't work. it doesn't work. You need a dummy player. Mm -hmm. And then uh, like a little light bulb, like, boom. <laughs> it is interaction in this game. <clears throat> yeah, and even like we haven't spoken about every single aspect of the game. No, like, there is all. some area majority. There's yes. like all of these different things going on. So I would say like it's a subtle thing. When I read the rules, I was thinking, oh, this isn't the most heavy uh, Lasorda game. We played it with a friend. And he he played the whole thing for four hours. And he was like, I usually never happened to me that I still don't understand everything. That kind of speaks to that there is a lot of stuff here and it's very heavy. It's just like in a different way that we are used to, mm -hmm. in a different way that my brain somehow makes it super hard to, to not be super tired while playing this game. Mm -hmm. So now let's go into final thoughts. But before that, if you are here and you like what we do on this channel, talk about board games and then you can help us out in a very big way by giving us a victory point. And we get victory points when you click that subscribe button down there. You can also click the bell to get notifications every time we post a new video. Yeah, final thoughts time for inventions. Evolution of ideas by Vital Lacerda, Ian O'Toole, published by Eagle Griffin Games. Yes. Let's go. I, I like it. Uh, it feels different. Um, <laughs> it feels different, but again, I I, I get some uh, some DNA from Weather Machine. I, mm. I get some um, associations with that. I like the puzzle both with with the worker placement. That I only block myself, so you take like kind of a way the interaction there, but you have a lot of interaction on the board. Yep. What actions is possible? What is good? What is available? So you're trying to manipulate. A lot of the game is manipulating those chain actions mm -hmm. and manipulating the dudes like if they're on the board they're doing one thing and if they're on your player board you can use them for something else mm -hmm. you want to you have want to have dudes uh, but the the chain action thing i like it but my brain doesn't mm. i kind of i like the idea of it but ultimately i'm I just, I wish like there it was a little fewer steps on my turn, 
but then again i don't want it to be fewer steps on my turn because i want to win you know yeah but it's... you could just go for having no influence so you can but have that it is no bad. chain yes i know yes so i i i really like it mm -hmm. but that part of the game even though i like the idea of it my brain gets a little overwhelmed by yep. it yep. and i don't have all the fun mm -hmm. i could have a little more fun yes i don't have all of it. Mm -hmm. So I have like 8.5 kind of fun. Yeah. I think it's a great game. Yeah. But but a Weather Machine was a 10 for me, I yes, think. Yes, that's true. We both so gave it, it a 10. So it could be a little more fun. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> this is not my favorite Lasura game. I I don't know why. I think like it feels different in, in a way. I, I like that. I like that he's trying different things. Yeah. Like as we said, like most of his games has this one worker thing, which makes all of them feel, except for Lisboa basically, which has the cards. Which makes them feel similar, but in a different way. This one is very different. Like, it still feels like Lasura, but it, it's at the same time, it doesn't. And I like it as well. I really like it. I think it's a great game. I, I just don't love it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not head over heels in love with it. I enjoy many of the things, but I agree with you for me as well. The amount of power my brain has to, to, to work with to be able to do the chain actions in the correct order, to get where I wanted to go, to not be like, many times when you play this, you're gonna be like, mm, I'm doing this and this. Oh, no, I can't because I needed one more chain action to do that. Mm -hmm. So then my whole turn was nothing and I will have to go back and do another thing. I know I have no idea what I'm gonna do. Just a little bit too, I agree with you, like you said, like too many steps. Yes. And really, and it's weird because the actions are simple. Yeah. Not the action, like one of the actions, play a card, do the thing. Yes. Like it's, it's not, it's not complicated actions. It's just something with both our brains. Mm -hmm. So probably for others as well, um, that makes this process kind of hard to internalize and make smooth. I think I would have to play this game 10 times or more before my brain would be like, oh, this is smooth. <laughs> it's way smoother now than it was in the beginning yeah. because you remember the abilities, you remember the actions better, you remember everything, but still you're like, okay, I want to maximize. You're always in that, as I said, the maximize headset. Yes. The mindset, the headset, that is test, the mindset uh, that you are trying to maximize everything. Mm, for me, it's going to be an eight. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a great game, uh, but not one I am loving. I want to keep it because it's a sort of I game agree. and I want to play it again. Yes. But it's not... It's not going to rank as the highest Lacerda for me. I'm just going to uh, compare it a little bit to Ricochet Robots. Because you have this ah. goal, you want to end up on that. And you can move a lot of different robots. And every time you're flipping over like, I'm going there, your brain starts like, I'm going there, there, there. No, it doesn't work. There, 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 there. No, it doesn't work. And, blah, 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 blah. and then at the, you're saying like, okay, I can get there in 10 moves. Mm. And then when it's your turn, you're like, wait. What was the 10 moves? How did I How did I get there? You know, I get that feeling. Yeah, it actually makes <laughs> a lot of sense. And that's going to be a great end word. If you haven't played Ricochet Robots, you should. It's yes. fun. And that's going to be the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Johannes. I'm Senua. And you've been watching Board Gaming Rambling Sand. Bye-bye.